when if it's especially good for those days when you might have professional development and you have duty and you need a breather. This is the DOK form when the children are um, when your students are the leader, they facilitate the activity. They choose the topics. You are just an observer. And it's an easy way, an easier way to just observe, check off if you're doing the right thing. Um, I can give you, and I, I'm giving you a lot of information on top, but I have folders that I created quite a while ago for each department for you to have these things as resources. Up top um, on the table, I was able to pull out the questions that I have for each department. Um, anybody can do a philosophical chair, anybody can do a credit seminar based on what your topic is. Um, if you look at your items now, I tried to create a few philosophical questions for your department. I'll give you like two minutes to look at those before I go to the next thing. schools, lynching, have articles on all those different types of things. I have them based on philosophy and experience, math and science, language arts, history. Like I said, if you need them, they are available to you. I'm trying to give you top information because I would like to do some um, impromptu philosophical chairs with you. Um, I don't know everybody's um, see everybody's standards. Do you have listening, speaking, and viewing as any of your standards? Sort of. You have writing as any of your standards? Well, I know that all of us have to do literacy. Literacy is about knowing whatever your topic is. So you have math literacy, you have English literacy, you have physical education literacy. So since you all have to do literacy, make it germane to whatever your topic you're teaching. So that's why I said this will be a good literacy um, item for you. Because again, all you have to do is think about the philosophical questions. You as a CCC or you as a department can come up with questions or topics you want your children to discuss or read and let them be in charge of them. Let them choose the topic. Let them, um, you can break them up just like I have the tables and boards. You could put them in groups, give them the overview, tell them, you know, these are the questions are. Let them choose the questions. Let them come, to, for example, if I had to pick right here that I said, you all agree or disagree, let a spokesperson come to the consent and be the spokesperson. It gets everybody in the classroom talking and it makes everybody respond. Again, it's that DOK form where you are just an observer. You're not giving them the topics, you're not um, making them do the things, it's not their opinion, it's, it's not your opinion, it's their opinion. So no topics on them. 
is what would show. For the articles that you just showed, uh, do some of them have philosophical questions already with them? Or okay, perfect. 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 Perfect.
for some of us that believe that there's a bigger plan when you pull the thread out of that, that fabric of the larger universe, that could lead to other ramifications that are bigger than what we even can grasp. So like that could be something to be taken into consideration as well. We don't have to know everything. We don't have to control everything. Then I might ask him another question. Is it ethical for parents to determine the attributes of their unborn child? Again, I would have to tell them this guy. And then I'm going to show you there are different ways you can do this. But for the sake of people who are large classes, you let them do this way. Is it ethical? You know it. I can go in there and do something for my kids when they have that health issue. You know what I mean? Something that's superficial, eye color, skin tone, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Because it don't matter. Right? You know what I mean? Uh, vision. Like, like my, my wife, she doesn't see what it is. Right? Not saying, guess what? My daughter doesn't see it. So, if I had an opportunity to go in there, like, okay, let's go. Yeah, so my daughter won't have a vision. She won't have a good presentation. So, I think it's a situation. But to be like, I want my baby to have a blue yeah, you know, hey, tall, you know, it's full of It's hard, it's so hard. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
where we let the students know that you don't respect everybody's opinion, mm -hmm. you don't talk over anybody. Um, if you disagree with a statement that was made, you never attack the person who said disagree with the statement. And those are rules getting started. Um, like I said, if you ever want to do a spread tomorrow, philosophical um, chair with your class, especially if you want literacy, um, I can give you enough that will carry you the whole year. So this tape right here, what do you say? Is it, um, is it always bad to discriminate? Why or why not? We went with no, and we went with more of just what the true definition behind discrimination means, just to be able to choose between. And so if you're just choosing between options, you have the discernment to, to say that this option is better for me. So with that being said, I can't say discrimination is always bad, because like the example said, we have a 17 year old daughter, I don't want her dating people with a 0 0.5 GPA. I can discriminate against that type of uh, pursuer. And so it's not, I don't think it's a bad thing in that point. And that's one of the things when I do a sample with the students, a lot of them will, when I have them move around, a lot of them, I said, they'll ask you questions, say no. In life, you have to read and you have to determine how you interpret the question. So I said, did you know this bad is in quotation marks? Um, they say, is it always bad? And then I might ask them, are there certain clothes you wear? Are there certain restaurants you like? Are there certain people you like to hang around? If it is, then you're discriminating. It's not always bad. Um, if you, there are several ways you can do it. Um, you might just, here's a blank sheet that they can write a reflection on. You might give them an article. You might just have plenty of articles on different things. You have, this is based on a story that my class is reading. And I let them talk about the story and let them form their opinion. But then I try to find out, trick them by seeing if they um, contradict what they said. So the question is Ken is adopted by his patients whom he has diagnosed as HIV positive. He's about to receive a blood transfusion prior to being released from the hospital. He has told Ken in confidence of their doctor-patient relationship that after he gets his transfusion and his medicine for Ken, he intends to infect as many people as possible with HIV starting that evening. Because Ken is bound by doctor-patient confidentiality, there's no legal way to stop this man from carrying out his plan. Even if Ken wanted, I'm sorry, warned the police, they would not be able to arrest him since his medical information is protected. It occurs to Ken that he would contaminate his medication by putting an untraceable poison in it that will kill him before he gets a chance to infect others. Should Ken poison this man in order to prevent him from spreading HIV? Now, these are ethical dilemmas, and it is, they are based on, like I said, a story that we are about to read. And the whole story deals with ethical dilemmas. But if you were talking among your group, what would you say? Yeah. 
that man was menacing to be arrested or if you need to get a body of one of the two. You know what I'm saying? I feel like in that juncture, the doctor's confidentiality needs to be amended to realize that if you the right you are for something to potentially have this too. So, 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 do that and poison him, then obviously that's illegal. He go to jail, you know, he was doing what he could see to be the right thing, which I think was the right thing, whatever. But like in that situation, we feel like that doctor patient confidentiality needs to be amended to where like if if it's like um, something that's gonna knowingly cause harm to the environment or the people, the patient himself, and that information needs to be disclosed to allow him to just go do that. I mean, that's, that's a tip of murder for everybody that he doggone uh, spreads that around to. So he needs to be stopped. He's menaced. He got to go. You know, so he needs to be locked up or he needs to be checked up out of here one or two. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It sounds like an episode of Lord Murray. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? I'm just thinking like I got I got three daughters. You know what I'm saying? And if if this was to happen to my daughter, then he got to see by me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Can I play devil's advocate? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm, I'm side with you a little bit, but uh, I hate seeing those commercials um, where they talk about how the medication now can actually bring your, your level down to the point where you can live a healthy life and even have unprotected sex and not spread that disease. So when you say attempted murder, I don't know if that's accurate considering medicine today. Right. So right. back then it might have been. That's that's cute and all, but like <laughs> you know you got HIV. You it's know. one thing like, you know, it was it was unintentional. You did this on purpose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, you might not die, but uh, your your life is gonna be completely awesome. Sure. You know what I'm sure. saying? You gotta take a gang of medicine every day. That stuff's not free. Somebody gotta pay for it with you, you know what I mean? So like So, so killing him be the same equivalent as giving somebody a Non-deadly disease, possibly, with the medications we have today. I'm just saying. His intent is intent. It's like if, yeah. if 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 somebody told you, hey, listen, I'm finna go, I'm finna go load up with a sniper, and I'm finna go take out as many folks as I can. You know, you got an option. Hey, look, do I take this guy? Do I turn him in, or do I just allow him to go, go bust cap these folks? Right. So like, that ain't. Um. Kind of the coming, not coming at y'all, but and, is it my, and this is just my stance in, in a few situations. I don't condone <laughs> killing anybody, but I do understand. I'm just leaving it. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> I'm with both of y'all. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know. But you got to get out of the way sometimes. You got to get through on me. I actually, and I, again, I have to be protective of the people if you make the students, it's always one group of students that are doing the presentation, you make that a big break for them, and then everybody who's participating, formative, summative. So you're the presenter, you're the teacher that day. It means you have to control your classmates. You have to tell them who to talk, point to them. You have to keep a grasp of who's um, commenting. And I said, and you have to make sure that when you're participating, you can't just say anything and then you want to get a participation rate. You have to think about what you're saying. With this one, I usually have fun with my system and measure students because they have the, it's a Hippocratic goal that says thou shalt not kill me. Or, or you can't do um, the harm. And so, based on the story that we're reading, and they said this, they would mostly contradict themselves, because a lot of them would say, oh, he has to go. And so, <laughs> you know, I have an article that kind of brings it more realistic, well, not well, more relevant to their experience, because uh, they all went through COVID, 
And there's an article that I pulled up that talks about a real life situation where there was only so many ventilators. And I normally use it in economics because of scarcity. And they have to read it and decide, okay, who are you gonna save? There's one ventilator left, there's three people. And it normally brings up some good discussions amongst the kids and it's like, I can't give you a right or wrong answer because I don't know. But what do you, how do you feel? So I'm like this, you know, something that, that I, I have the article somewhere. Else. All of these are those type of questions. The baby of the townspeople. Like the lady has to decide whether or not there are soldiers that are going to kill everybody if um, they hear them. They're all hiding. Her baby starts crying. Um, she has to decide whether or not to make noise. Um, I'm sorry, turn on a ventilator, not ventilator, I'm sorry, turn on a machine that would drown out the noise but would kill a baby but save anybody else. So, and then it says, should you, um, should Jane overheat your baby in order to save herself and the other town? So they ask questions like that.
that you can utilize for a door. But, um, like I said, if you ever want to set up a Socratic seminar or a philosophical chair, can't have weight weight, especially for literacy. On those days that you have PD and you have the duty, this is a good way to get the students coming. Because you see that everybody was communicating, and even your students that don't want to talk have an opinion. The children are always have an opinion. So, um, now they set my time is up, so I hope some of that. Oh, I have one more time. Okay, let's try this one. How important is free speech, if at all? How important is free speech? Okay, then you might have, does free speech have a set definition? If it does, what is it? These are questions that the children created. Because the Bloom's taxonomy questions I gave you on that packet are question starters, I would suggest that they, and you tell them to choose, create two questions from each of the six units. That means they would have 12 questions. It can range from 45 minutes to 90 minutes. I've had students so involved that they want to go a whole nother day because they get so involved in what they're talking about. You might have, um, I'm sorry, this one about spanking, giving you background information. Spanking your children is a good form of discipline. You all have um, popsicle sticks. The most important one is you're in between, the red one is disagree, green is agree. You just raise your hand, raise it up. Well, that illustration's got a man holding a belt. That's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's different than Spain. <laughs> no, that's, 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 that's your generation. That's my generation. My definition of Spain is different. A belt, a switch. For the country, I'm from. I am a huge savvy South Asian uh, product of spanking. Um, it's very effective, but now being a father of a child who really doesn't need to be spanked. It's like I can honestly say, like, not every child needs to be spanked. It is not necessary for each individual child. I When applied appropriately, yes, spanking is very good for children because it sets boundaries and it lets them know if you do this, there is a consequence and a punishment because sometimes taking things away does not work. If you were a child like I was that didn't care about that type of stuff, yes, you probably need a little um, corrective stuff. Yeah, unless you know that it hurts your parents just as much as it hurts you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That part too matters. You, you cry to <laughs> <laughs> And we cry together. <laughs> it's, it's immediate. Okay, then let's oh, switch so. to um, the appropriation, cultural appropriation versus appreciation. Do you think there should be consequences for cultural appropriation? I'm in the middle only because this literally just happened to me on Saturday and I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. So I went to a break dancing competition and I was expecting to see people who look like me and that's not who I saw. And so I just I think like that's so interesting because while it was nice that the break dancing culture has evolved, it's still, I was just like, this is crazy. I think it was at least 30 teams that competed and only three looked like me. And I was like, what? are they at a different conversation? <laughs> and so then it just made me start thinking, so like when cultures do create stuff, then how do you, or is it necessary to be like, well, that was ours? Like when you think of like the evolution of just like hip hop and 
like at some point do you have to claim it was yours or are you just happy that it's now for the masses and that you don't have to be like hey that was us only if it's from australia Oh, that uh, was Australian yeah. great taste. It was terrible. <laughs> she should be canceled. Yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> they took it out already. It's not going to be. I didn't expect it to be in the last minute. Yes, it is a part of free speech, but there's a consequence that comes with that. Mm -hmm. Like, you can walk up and smack somebody if you want to, you got the right, right? But if that person punches you in your mouth, you know, that's the consequence you get for smacking somebody, but you had every right to do it. So it's the same thing with hate speech. You use hate speech and you get the punishment that comes with it. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. If you hit them, they can be protected. It's a decision. Decisions have consequences. And another one is censorship a violation of free speech. What's the difference between censorship and limiting free speech? Oh my son, son. And again, these are the tries that children, um, students made up. One question that I made up. What were the people are the censors? But I had a group in, um, uh, that did their songs, uh, council culture. What would be their end goal or their end objective? in their presentation? Is it just to keep the conversation going or do they ever say what was right or wrong? It's, for the philosophical chairs um, are really expressing your philosophy. So everybody gets to voice their thoughts. At the end, we do one or two things. You do a rhetorical crises, which is literally just a, it's like Twitter when I type this. It's a paragraph where the student puts the title of the article. They write a paragraph about what the article was about, and then the word cited. And then you can do a reflection, which I'm pointing to. You reflect on the whole item. And do you use this for literacy block? I don't have literacy, but because of, I use, I'm sorry, I use the ethical dilemmas as a writing because for me in the morning, they always have to learn the songs of writing.